This is Kink Friendly, a safe place for men to explore and to learn about even the most intimate parts of themselves. My name is Mistress Elisa, and I am here to take you by the hand and to lead you on a journey to wholeness and healing. There are no barriers here. So let's talk openly about the things that are on your mind. Sex, relationships, kinks and fetishes, sexual truth. And did I say sex? (laughs) I want you to feel free to be open and vulnerable in this space because my plan for you is to have you living your life with peace, joy, and fulfillment. I want you to become equipped and empowered to live your best fucking life possible. But in order to get you to that place, we've got some work to do. So, welcome to Kink Friendly. And welcome home, sweetheart. Hmm. Yeah. Hello and welcome to Kink Friendly. This is Mistress Lisa. Today is episode 20. I have been doing these podcasts every day for two and a half weeks, close to three weeks. We're in another two days or so. It will be three weeks. I'm really thrilled because uh, I'm I'm getting the flow. I'm getting the flow of this. For those of you who know me, you know that I've started and stopped podcasts, but this one is definitely resonating with me and I'm loving it. The energy and, um, oh, and there are some guests. So Alicia's here. Caleb is here. We had them on yesterday. I'll, uh, actually, Caleb, I don't know if you come on. I'll, I'll invite both of you up. And Mr. Heathen is back. That's beautiful. Wonderful. So I'll invite you guys up. And what I'll do is just go ahead and get the room started. Um, But for those of you who know me, you know that I have started these podcasts. And I sort of struggle with what is my message? What is my intention? Like, as uh, Caleb, if you don't want to speak on open mic, that's okay. I know that you might have to be a bit more careful. So it's up to you. If you want to come up, I've sent the invite. But if you don't accept, that's okay. Um, but uh, trying to hone in on the, the message and the focus. And I'm finally settling in on that. So for me, my passion, for those of you who are new to the show, my passion is... Um, female dominance and male submission, or dominant women, dominant females, and submissive men. That's my passion. That's where I flow. That is my truth. And uh, that's how I live my life. Mistress Heathen, I've sent the invite a few times. I remember yesterday we had a few problems getting you up, but um, if you send me a message and, and let me know what you need from me, I'll I'll keep trying. Leisha, you're up. I can see you. Welcome. Um, so today's room, I'll go ahead and, and set up what we're doing. Oh, Black is back. Hi, Black. Welcome. Just going to listen. Okay, wonderful. Nice to have you here. Okay, so today, um, uh, I'll just read what I've written. In BDSM, it is common for practitioners to be drawn to the lifestyle because of the promise of sexual pleasure. However, submission is about much more than sexual pleasure and sexual submission. So in today's episode of Kink Friendly, I want to broach the subject of vulnerability for the submissive male. 
I want to talk about what that means and what it looks like and why it's so important. And where is my Michael? I don't see my Michael. Uh, Let me send him a message. Are you there? Poor thing. We probably wore him out in the show. Just going to listen for now. Okay. Um, Mistress Heathen, I did send you the invite. It doesn't look like it's working. I'm not sure. Again, just let me know what you need. Um, So guys, when it comes to vulnerability and the submissive male, what I want to do right now is talk to the men for a little bit and help you to understand why vulnerability is so important. So vulnerability is important because you want, the whole reason for you being in the lifestyle is that you want to connect, you want a place to belong, you want to feel like you have a place to call home, you want and you need something for your heart and for your soul. And so when you come into a space with a dom, okay, Mr. Heathen, got it. Oh, Mr. Heathen, that was you. I thought that that was Black Opulence saying that. I'm sorry. Black Opulence, there you go. Mistress, I, I totally misread it. Um, so when it comes to the lifestyle, a lot of times submissive men are coming into this space because they've watched porn, because they have, you know, watched Fifty Shades. We we keep talking about that. But they're coming into the space for different reasons. And externally, it's like something is leading them, guiding them and pulling them in. But what's happening is they are ignoring what's happening internally. They are ignoring what it is at their heart and their soul may need. They are ignoring what it is that is nagging them. And so for men in particular, this doesn't happen so much with women. I'm glad Leisha's here because she's going to be able to chime in on this. She is submissive, but she's a, um, she's a submissive female. Um, And people try to say, well, you know, subs are subs. That absolutely is not true. Absolutely, 100% is not true. So what happens with men is most of the time they're coming to the lifestyle because their dick is like, oh, she's got hot tits. Let's go over there and let's pretend like we're submissive. Like, Like, let's go in that direction. And oh, her ass is amazing. And oh, she has such pretty toes. And so men will oftentimes say things like, oh, I just want to submit not to a powerful woman, not to a dominant woman, but to a beautiful woman. And there's nothing wrong with a woman being beautiful and for you appreciating us for being beautiful. There's nothing fucking wrong with that at all. But what you're missing out on is the fact that life, you as a person, as a soul, as a human being, there's so much more to you than just your dick. Now, your dick is welcome in the BDSM space. Obviously, you know, BDSM is king friendly. So your dick is welcome. But the problem and the challenge for men is that you're leading with your cocks and your dicks. You're leading with that. You're emphasizing your cock's pleasure. You're emphasizing what it is that you want sexually. That's where the problem comes in. So vulnerability is important because vulnerability allows you to connect with the the person that you want to submit to. And in my world, in my space, you're submitting to a female dominant that's what you're doing. It's a female dom. And so the man is here and he's like, okay, well, I need fulfillment. I need peace. I need love. I need all of the stuff. I need to feel safe. I need a place to call home because the world is crazy. Work is crazy. You know, things are hectic at home. I need a place for me, for myself. If you need a place like that, then why are you leading with your dick? 
Why are you doing that? If you need a place for your heart and for your soul, for your mind to be able to explore and for your mind to be able to like tap into things intellectually, there's something called sapiosexualism, which I consider myself to be. I'm a sapiosexual. I get turned on by intellectual conversations. I get turned on by a man's intellect. Why is it that if a man is looking for fulfillment and a place to call home, why isn't he exploring sapiosexualism? Why isn't he exploring more intimate um, aspects of BDSM? Why is the emphasis on what gets his dick off? Now, I'm going to tell a quick story. And then um, now... I don't know who BYDSX is. Sweetheart, I don't know you. I've never seen you before. And um, so what I'm going to do is ask you to listen to the room for just a bit. And then um, just wait a few minutes, get a feel for the space. And then if you want to come up, ask again uh, in about 15 or 20 minutes. But get a feel for the space before you try to come up and chime in. I appreciate you being here, though. So why are men letting their dicks lead the way when their hearts and their souls are yearning for a place to call home, when their hearts and their souls want a place to be comforted, when they want to just melt for a dominant woman? If you're wanting to melt for me and if you're wanting me to create a space for you um, where you can just be and, and you can just let go of everything excuse me, then don't lead with your dick. Don't come into the space with your dick. Now, we were just in a room where one poor little good boy got called out for that. And um, yeah, it it was interesting because he was definitely, uh, uh, he was definitely leading with his dick. One second, my good boy is not here. Come to the show. excuse me. So I want to, let's see what's happening in chat. Um, Black says he's listening. Oh, it's Canice. (laughs) Canice. (laughs) It's Canice Major. (laughs) I'm sitting here reading you like, just sit still. Just be, just sit still. I'll get to you. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Hi, Kenneth. Welcome. Hi. All right, so, I'm going to go on mute for a bit, okay? Okay, thank you for that. All right, thank you so much. And, and uh, Kenneth, also, I can hear your television yes, or yes, radio. Yes, the television. I will turn that down. Okay. Thank you. You're okay, so, Leisha, I have your mic open. Hi. Hi. So I want for people who think that submission is submission all around, uh, we've had this conversation before. So I don't want it to sound like it, you know, I don't want it to be robotic between the two of us. So I'm going to ask you questions. And I know that we've already talked about it. But I would love for you to share your experience as a female submissive. um, Because I want men to understand that it's different. So as a female submissive, what is your, like, what is your perspective and how do you approach the lifestyle? Mm-hmm. Um, yes, I think what we talked about was that um, for me, because I'm a woman, I, I suppose society doesn't put the same sort of expectations on me, like that, that I have to be, uh, you know, a hard ass all the time, if you will, <laughs> right? Like women have the liberty to express emotions and we actually have a lot of leeway in, in, in that department. And so, you know, being vulnerable and submissive is sort of like comes with the package. And I'm not saying that's a great thing, <laughs> maybe, but, uh, but yes, I, I think that men uh, have societal expectations to not, you know, be seen as weak, to not be seen as vulnerable. And so it's harder for them to submit, um, I think, especially to a woman, um, you know, because I, I think 
maybe in men's professional careers, maybe they don't have a problem submitting to, you know, the male CEO or whatever, the, the male manager. But I think it, it is harder for them to uh, submit to women. So, so I don't, how, how is it for I, you? I, I can't, I can't identify. Well, just, um, I, I had met a dominant woman years ago that, that told me, you know, when submissive men come to me, they actually have trouble submitting. And, and I, that just really blew my mind. Uh, and I was like, really? But I, I mean, that's, isn't that why they come to see you to begin with? Like, it didn't make sense to me. Um, but yeah, but you're and, like and it, baffled by it. You're baffled I'm, by, I'm baffled struggle. by like, it. If you yeah. want to submit, just do it. So exactly. the thing that happens is that a lot of times men are pretending to submit because their agenda is not submission. Their agenda is truly sexual pleasure. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of times because the dom is not really necessarily a true dom and some people will you know argue with my definition but a true dom is not for sale a true dom might get paid for what she does but she's not for sale so you can't convince a true dom to step outside of her truth most of the the people who are drawn to bdsm as dominant women these days are like you know they are doing it for the money so men have this idea that, well, my credit card is valid. I paid you. You're supposed to play this game with me. I'm pretending to submit, but here's my checklist of stuff and you're supposed to give it to me. Mm -hmm. You probably have never thought like that. No, I I mean, well, I can't exactly say that because I, I do tend to find people that, you know, share what I want to do, you know, um, so that there's not this uh, other kind of negotiation of like. Or any kind of negotiation. Differences. Do you yeah. negotiate with your dom? Like you might share what, what your boundaries are, but are you as a female submissive, are you negotiating and trying to top from the bottom? Do, you, do female submissives even do that? <laughs> I, I mean, well, I, I do want to say that I, I cannot speak for all female submissives. Like, just like, you know, like, for example, between you and Mistress Heathen, it, you know, you have, like, you can't say all female doms are like this. Like, it's the same with me. So, and I, I actually have heard of of um, submissives topping from the, but female submissives topping from the bottom. Um, I've heard people talk about that. Um, I think especially sort of the, the bratty types is that oh you know, god um, now you know, you know that you're going you to you're going to stress into... mistress heathen out <laughs> i know it's you know what's funny people have people will ask me that like are you a brat like you know and and i'm always like no i'm actually not i i you know am am reaching for the the good girl thrown my way as much as possible you know <laughs> yeah but you know but that's my style like that's that's like my core of what I want, you know, like that, that speaks to the kind of person that I am just like a bratty sub, you know, that speaks to who she is and how she wants to express herself. And no, but let let me help you because Mm -hmm. this whole concept or not help you, but let me help my listeners. Rather the people who listen to my podcast have no idea I, because you guys talk about bratty subs all the time. I want you to know that my audience has no idea what a bratty sub is because my guys are 50 and up. Can you imagine a 50 year old man like stomping his feet and putting his hands on the, you know what I mean? It just doesn't happen in my space. So this whole thing, and I know that Mistress Heathen gets all worked up and I'm like, I don't know what the big deal is about a brat because it's never in my space. I know what it is, but that's, so anyway, the people who are listening to my podcast are not going to identify with that. They're not going to get it. But, but let's go back to you as a female sub, you don't negotiate or top from the bottom as a habit. I mean, not from what I've heard, do you? I don't, I don't think so. Um, I mean, I, I, I have, 
I have had conversations with my tops about like sort of the severity of spankings and like, you know, like, please take it easy. Or like if it's someone like brand new, <laughs> brand spanking new, um, you know, I'll have to tell them like, you know, I, like I bruise really easily. Like I'm not looking for like a, you know, <laughs> you know, I mean like a, an all out thrashing, if you will, because, but, but again, there are women that, that do want that, you know, like, that's why I make a point to say like, you know, uh, these are my limits essentially, but I don't think st stating limits is the same as topping from the bottom. <laughs> I don't think that's right. Like right? Your I mean, and your boundaries are your truth. You don't want to get yeah, hurt. You don't want to exactly. damage your soul or your body. So mm -hmm. no, I think all subs need to um, state what their limitations are and what their boundaries are. Mistress Heathen just came up. Let's get her to talk um, let's get her to address boundaries and limitations, but uh, also let's just, uh, I'll give her the mic. Mistress, what are your thoughts? Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah. So um, in regards to boundaries, when I'm thinking uh, relationship um, in, in that regard, I am assuming we've gone through vetting and we've gone through court courting and and, and negotiations and and so on so by the time that we're in a relationship and are we if are we still talking about brats here we're talking about vulnerable <laughs> I don't want to get you triggered. I don't okay. want you triggered. So we, we, we're talking about um, the, the question for Alicia was, do you try to top from the bottom? We're talking about the difference between the, the female submissive and the male submissive. And so Alicia is saying she doesn't really top from the bottom. But male submissives, how often do you find that they are really there to try to get what they want done? How often do you find that, mistress? Yes, um, most certainly, especially with um, inexperienced um, male submissives um, and, uh, and even female submissives. So the more inexperienced uh, I've noticed that they have when they are not just, they just don't really know really how to navigate through um, all of the etiquette <laughs> that it takes to get to our attention. Um, it tends to be... Um, manipulation from the bottom end of the dynamic um, to get the outcome that they're looking for. Now, Mistress Heathen, I know that you do a lot of, I, I do more um, online activity and you are in person and you do live sessions and it's more of, um, you're much more open. You're free to be more open. I'm curious about why men come to you. For me, they're coming because they want like relationship and they're looking for internal fulfillment. Do you find that men who go to you are looking for fulfillment or are they looking for play or a mixture? What is it that you're finding? Uh, for me, I'm finding that it is a mixture where they, in some cases, they are getting what they need with their wife um, emotionally. Or or something like that, but they are but they're not getting what they need physically. They don't they're not getting that um, interaction where there's uh, impact play um, and, and more extreme things. Maybe they're they really truly love their wife and, and, and don't want to leave, and they're they're fulfilled there. And I've had these conversations with some of the boys, but their wife may be like vanilla. Um, in other cases, can you I, um, can you define impact play, please? Some of the the terms I know that uh, I, I'm just aware that some people are new, so just giving them the benefit of the doubt of being new. So impact play, can you define that for us, please? Yes, impact play, um, any kind of play where there's uh, spanking and slapping and and so forth, where there is physical impact. Um, uh, would be what we're speaking, paddling and so on, things like that. Okay, so now let's take all that we have, all that we're talking about, and let's put it within the context of vulnerability. What does it take for a submissive to be vulnerable? I want to go to, um, who is it? Oh, we need to get you to change your name. Where is he? Canis. So Canis, um, why don't you introduce yourself? And I would like for you to speak on vulnerability 
um, from your perspective. This is Canis Major coming up. Go ahead, sweetheart. Yes, hi. Hello to the room. Good evening. Um, well, not to sound redundant, but when I think about being submissive um, and my spirit, once again, I go to humility, security, um, and just kind of more or less just knowing who you are and what what space you want to fulfill. Um, for me, submission should not come from a place of weakness and it should not come from a place of considering myself as a victim. So um, I definitely want to... Uh, definitely differentiate, you know, being submissive from being indentured, you know, an indentured servant. Some people uh, in their submissive roles, they want to have that impact play and be dominated in all aspects, mentally, sexually, financially, et cetera. Then you have some that just may just want to role play at times. Then you have some submissive that just have what I would consider just a, a humility about themselves, a reassurance about themselves. I think a true submissive is in uh, the art of providing a service as well. So if you don't like tending to people, uh, or being told what to do. If you if you disregard authority and instructions, then that person probably wouldn't make a great submissive. They'd be more uh, of an agitator um, to the whole process, um, and vice versa. You know, I, I feel that the the same stands true for the the dominant. Uh, as well to uh, to lead with the intentions of producing the best submissive, you know, um, person, you know, for for a more positive and healthy interaction overall. Like, uh, no one wants to raise a child, you know, an adult child. No one wants to um, have to take care of someone. I think it just takes a lot of extreme patience as well. Um, Kenneth, why do you think it's important for a submissive to be vulnerable? Why is that important? Well, I think it's important because if, if, if as a submissive, if I'm being open and vulnerable, that allows the dominant subject in my life to better provide the care that they may deem fit at the time. You know, um, some of my vulnerabilities may be that I lack discipline. So the person that's in charge of me is going to instill discipline in me. It could be, you know, so that that's what it is. Like, I, I'm, and it depends on the reason, um, I'm looking to be dominated and what aspect of my life, you know, um, but overall being vulnerable is a sign of true strength and trust because as we said on the clubhouse, um, as I mentioned, to, to, to voice my vulnerabilities to you provides you with the essential tools that you may need to fortify me, to make me stronger. So I'll just... Okay, so vulnerability, from what I'm hearing you say, is important because it's good for you um, in order to have your needs met, but it's also good for the relationship. Without vulnerability, what do you have? I'll go back to Mistress Heathen. What does what can you have with a submissive if he is not vulnerable? If he has his walls up? What what can you possibly do with him 
other than beat his ass and make him, him cry or, you know, peg him. I mean, you can do lots of physical stuff, but what happens with the relationship if there's no openness and vulnerability, Mistress Heathen? Yeah, um, all the all the kinky stuff is can be fun, but it's unfulfilling for me personally. I don't take much interest um, in that particular individual if there isn't vulnerability, because within vulnerability comes um, the beauty of honesty and transparency um, and growth. And it breeds this kind of uh, habitat for, for something healthy um, between us um, to, to add that extra layer into our power exchange dynamic um, and, or relationship. Um, and I really want to emphasize relationship. So um, that being said, vulnerability is, is key to even, you know, even in gaining my interest in general. Um, I would have to agree with you. It, so if I. if I don't see vulnerability, I'm not interested. Absolutely. Because I, I can't do anything. I can't reach you. I can't touch you. I can't communicate with you. And I think also as a submissive, it's, it's important as well to know that when we're being vulnerable, um, that the dominant person in our life shows some genuine care and concern, you know, because you know, for me anyway, if I, I'm very transparent. So, um, you know, I always like to use myself as a reference guide um, as far as dealing with depression, anxiety, et cetera. Um, so when I speak, I like, I'm really talking to myself a lot, you know, even if I speak in general terms. But um, for me, it's very important to be able to to share my fears, um, my, my skepticisms, with someone that I can trust because they allow me the, uh, they afford me the opportunity rapper if they're genuine for me to grow and to know that I can overcome them. And that dominant person in my life will have that, that power over me spiritually, mentally, and in my heart. Like it'll almost be as if they have a remote control and they're controlling my every action and thought, even when I'm not in their presence because of the integrity that they will be instilling in me by following instructions to the T um, and just having fun with it as well. It has to be fun. It can't be strenuous. It has to be Gotcha. All right. So um, for those of you who are listening, that was Canis Major talking. I think that his perspective is interesting because he identifies as a switch. Now, those of you who know me know that I normally say, you know, switching is bullshit. <laughs> like it, for me, I've always just seen men coming to me saying I'm a switch. And usually what they're saying is, oh, well, sometimes I want to be fucked and sometimes I want to fuck. That's all they're saying. They're not really talking about meeting the needs of their partner. They're not talking about the connection or the relationship. When a man says he's a switch, 99.9999% of the time, he is basically saying, sometimes I want to fuck and sometimes I want to be fucked. The thing that I really appreciate appreciate about Canis Major is that he he gets it in terms of energy. So when he says he's a switch, and I really want my good boys to hear this, when he says that he's a switch, he's talking about adjusting his energy to fit the room or the mood or the person that he's engaging with. Now that is a real switch. And so that means that I can respect him and I can hear him as a switch. Um, and then I am more likely to believe him when he goes into the bedroom and he says, well, sometimes I want to fucking, well, I actually, I don't want to put words in your mouth. <laughs> he has never said, sometimes I want to fucking, sometimes I want to be fucked. I'm, I'm not putting you on the spot and you don't have no, to respond okay. to that. <laughs> no, it's quite okay. I mean, like, like I said, in prior dialogue with you, um, um, it's, it's, 
it's okay to have thoughts and to be curious about things because I think it's just human nature, you know, curiosity. Um, curiosity never killed any cat that I've ever owned, you know. Um, curiosity only broadens the horizons for a person, you know. It, it, it allows you to expand the... Um, um, your horizons, you know, and, and, and see the world in a different view. So, but I'm definitely, um, in, in, in my personal life, um, I would definitely say that I'm more submissive, um, in my dominant role in my personal life. That's when I would say I was in like my days of ignorance, like when I was, uh, a gang leader, Things like that, you know, um, my, when I exert dominance, um, if it's not productive, like um, playing sports or things of that nature, just being um, a, a great voice at work, you know, in my workplace, you know, to, to be an example. So, yeah, I'm dominant in those aspects, but I'm also very submissive because I follow every rule of work. You get what I'm saying? So... I'm, I'm very submissive, but yet there are times in my life, even in my submissive role, that I like to be dominant within my servitude. So I'm a submissive in heart, yet some of my submissive tendencies may seem to be dominant, like if, if that makes any sense. I would use the word assertive, though, Kenneth. Yes, yes, definitely. I, I would say Better you're word, assertive. assertive. So even like today in the room that we had where I, because I'm new to the space and I was trying to um, become acclimated with the space and the buttons and all of this stuff. And I was like, what am I doing? And you stepped right in. That wasn't dominance to me. That was you actually serving, but you were, you were serving with, um, with assertiveness. And so I, I think sometimes these labels kind of bite us in the ass because it's really about the intention. So you you could have stepped up and you could have done it with dominance. You could have done the exact same thing, but your energy would have been like, you know, I'm dominant and I'm here and I'm in control, but your energy was like, I'm here to serve. So it's not necessarily about what you're doing. It's about the energy and the intention. I see Mistress's mic open. I think she wants to jump in. Oh my gosh, did my mic open? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I didn't mean to do that. I'm listening, but I do agree with, um, with what you were saying in, in regards to um, Kenneth's approach um, with, with his assertiveness earlier today in Clubhouse. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's go to Michael. Michael, you you were actually one of the inspirations. Leisha had this idea yesterday for this show, but Michael, you were one of the inspirations. Um, I, I want to hear you um, express, hi, Blue, good to see you. Welcome. So good to see you. Michael, you were kind of on the spot today, and I, I felt like a little bit of extra care needed to be taken because you were open and vulnerable. Let's hear your thoughts on vulnerability, sweetheart. All right. Well, I would say, so from my perspective of being um, the one who, you know, prefers to submit um, when it comes to me being vulnerable what it takes is um one thing in particular and what that is is i need to in order to be vulnerable i need to ensure that um that who i'm submitting to in this case mistress elisa i need to make sure that um what that my emotions will be in the right hands and they will be handled with care because I find that, um, you know, when I know I'm sort of in a safe environment that, um, you know, when I say something and sort of express um, my emotions of vulnerability, it um, it's very comforting when I know that the other person has my, um, 
you know, my best interests in mind and they sort of, um, you know, are able to sort of cradle, you know, my emotions and my vulnerabilities, almost like a, a child in the sense that, um, you know, with being held, it's sort of, um, it's kind of, um, what well, it's one of the, you know, truest forms of connection. And I feel that way with, um, with sharing my emotions. And I think that's, um, you know, just connecting it back to, um, sort of my life in other situations, it sort of, um, you know, is represented in the sense that, um, Right now in my life, I find that when, you know, one of the most important traits that I find with, um, you know, finding a partner and creating friendships is emotional intelligence. And for me, emotional intelligence, it's sort of, um, you know, just, you know, having the ability to, how can I put it, read emotions, communicate emotions and to sort of um, cater to those emotions when they are presented to you. Because I find that that's just, um, you know, that's just, you know, one of the most important things for me. And that's, that will make it very, that makes it very easy for me to, you know, be, to continually be vulnerable and to um, submit as well. How difficult was it for you, Michael? Because my heart did go out to you. Um, for those of you who are listening, um, this conversation is a little bit of a continuation of a conversation that we started a little while ago, a few hours ago, actually. So, Michael, how did it feel? I, I, I'm going to put words in your mouth, and you, you correct me if I'm wrong. But how did it feel to be open and vulnerable and to not have your needs met. Because I, I feel like that's what happened. In the group setting, you were open and vulnerable. And I, uh, you were new to me. You are a new good boy to me. But as your dom, as your mistress, I could see that you needed something. But I wasn't able to address it in a group setting. So I felt like my good little boy was just open and vulnerable and hurting over in the corner. But I couldn't get to you because I was in a group setting. I'm grateful, um, eternally grateful to Kenneth Major for stepping in and uh, and doing what he did. But um, how did it feel? And I'm assuming that your your needs were not met. If I'm wrong, let me know. But talk to me about that just a bit. So in that moment, I was... Um... Well, I was, I believe that I was being, um, you know, very vulnerable with, um, with what I was expressing at the time, but it appeared, um, you know, from my point of view that, um, that that didn't, um, you know, translate to what other people sense. So for me in that mm -hmm. moment, it was sort of, um, not necessarily that I didn't have my needs met, it was more so I, um, how can I put it? It's more so. Or Were you misunderstood, like, sweetheart? Is that what it was? It was like being misunderstood, not being heard. Yeah, I think that's that's a good way to put it. Yeah. So, what did it feel like then? Let, let's let's look at this. What did it feel like to be open and vulnerable? but to not be heard and to not have your feelings validated. For those of you who are listening, again, Michael is a submissive, and I want you to look at the way that he's working. I want you to look at the way that he's able to sit in his feelings and you know, talk through them and work through them and be supported. Because a lot of times, submissive men want to be supported. They want to be loved. They, they want to be... Um, you know, they want to feel safe and that kind of thing, but they, they don't give the dominant woman the opportunity. And in this situation, Michael is not only giving the doms the opportunity, but also the room at large. So, Michael, what did it feel like to be open and vulnerable, but to not be seen or heard and to not have those feelings validated? <laughs> So what it felt like in the moment was sort of a um, rejection almost. Oh, wow. 
That hits deep. Yeah. In particular, it, um, yeah, and with that rejection, I sort of felt a bit of, how can I put it? Um, sort of not, you know, I felt a little anxious as well because of that. Mm-hmm. And I also felt, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, just, I, I, for lack of better words, I think, um, you know, incomplete in that moment. And it's sort of, um, you know, I, I, I sat there for a little bit with my, um, with those feelings, just trying to um, you know, process exactly what I was feeling. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think that's it. How did you feel when Canis Major spoke up and uh, addressed that need that you had in that moment? How did you feel? In that moment, I was... Big brother to the rescue. <laughs> <laughs> in yes. that moment, I would say... Validated. Oh, it's, good. Yeah, it's like, um, you know, I expressed my vulnerabilities and someone was able to um, to pick it up. And, you know, that just might be... Um, you know, a consequence of being on the same frequencies because as um, mm-hmm. Candace, Candace Major mentioned, he was mentioning that, um, you know, we tend to, um, you know, be bookworms and like to study. And, you know, maybe that's why he was able to pick it up. But I feel, um, I felt Candace, in that moment. Candace, Mike, there you go. Thank yes, you. Yes. Go ahead, Michael. I was trying to get him to close his uh, microphone, Michael. Go ahead. I was all done. Okay. Oh, I'm so pleased. I I really am. Um, So for those of you who are listening, I I want to make the point that this wasn't a huge issue. Like, it, it wasn't like, you know, someone said something really mean and offensive and you know there was an argument and it wasn't one of those big blowout moments i really tried to get people to understand but in your relationships if you don't deal with shit as shit happens that shit is just going to build up and you know it's just a matter of time before your sub Um, submissive men, it's only a matter of time before you shrink away, before you back away, you put your walls up. Um, It's just a matter, or you act out. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. So when a good boy tries to act out instead of expressing, you know, hurt pain or disappointment or whatever, acting out is not acceptable. Um, Communication is where it's at. So I want you to see how much time and care is going into this one moment. And it truly was. It wasn't a big blowout moment. And when I talk to people about communication and taking care of their submissives or submissive men being open and vulnerable so that they can be taken care of, a lot of times I'll hear things like, oh, that's boring or that's unnecessary. I even had a submissive man say to me, oh, that's just irritating because I, because I said to him, how are you doing? How do you feel? You know, process your emotions. And he said to me, well, that's just irritating. I don't like the fact that you keep telling me um, how to or to process. Well, if I'm telling you to process, it means you're holding something in. So I'm telling you to do something that's for your own good. But also the fact that he told me that he was irritated by it just meant, okay, my work here is done. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to fight with you and struggle with you. For submissive men who really want beautiful relationships, you need to learn the art of openness and vulnerability. And that communication is just inherently a part of that. You know, yesterday we spent a lot of time just like laughing and cutting up and talking about kinks and fetishes. And, you know, we were able to just laugh and have a great time about some of the crazy shit 
that we've seen, that we've done, that we've experienced. And, and you can do that. You can have fun in the lifestyle, in your relationships. But if you don't also spend time doing the work, then you're basically just kinking. And there's nothing wrong with just kinking if that's what you want. But I, I do believe that kinking needs to come with like a warning sign. If you kink only and your heart and your soul and your mind are not involved, your ass is going to be fucked up. And that's just the truth. If all you're doing is walking into spaces, trying to see what you can get into, there's no real agenda. You're just here to feel the space and get your dick off and see how hard you can shoot tonight. Your ass is begging for trouble. Mistress Heathen, because you do more of this in person and you do more scening, are there warning signs for you when a person's heart and soul are not involved and when it's just, you know, me and my dick, that kind of approach? Are there warning signs for you? And if you're on the phone, just let me know. I know that she had a call earlier. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, the warning signs would be um, just a deflection of conversation when it comes to emotions or um, expressing, you know, how you feel or what your needs are at that moment or um, at that time or whatever, even once. Um, and uh, I tend to be a little bit more, I guess, high protocol in that way of, you know, I if I see there needs to be an, an, a conversation, then I will address, I will assert like that conversation. Um, just just because it just, it need, and, I, and I, I don't always, I'm not always right, right? Sometimes, sometimes. Um, sometimes we aren't, yeah. Like, sometimes I miss it. So, um, but if I can, you know, I, I do. But yeah, anytime that there's, an aversion to that kind of conversation is a big red flag for me. Um, and it reminds me of a story that in my earlier days, when I first moved into the kink house, um, there was a lot of kinking going on, right? Um, and I was still developing uh, my style and still am, to be honest. But at that time, I was really early on. Um, and I had a had a, a boy who was uh, training to be, you know, my slave. And I mean, honestly, things were really good. He was a really, really good boy. I mean, mm -hmm. he was on top of it. Um, what does that look like for you, for a good boy to be on top of it? I mean, he was uh, anticipatory. Like he would, he would, he was intuitive. Mm -hmm. um, he anticipated um, and ate my needs. Um, he... You know, he followed directions. I did not have to repeat myself. Um, mm -hmm. If I did, there was discipline. And after that, I didn't have any any real issues. He, he made sure to be aware of um, of, of his of his uh, choices and, and things like that. So there was a time and things were going really, really well. And one day. I had asked him about a particular tattoo and he, and it was after a day after an intense scene with us. And this question made him break down into tears. Oh, and, and he, he goes into his family life and um, him not feeling connected to these, these family members anymore. Um, So I believe that there was drop um, and he was, still uh, you'll have to explain to people what drop is. Oh yeah. So after, <laughs> I forget. So <laughs> after an intense scene, um, you know, when when the endorphins are, are are all over the place and you're having a good time, um, then there's you could potentially. Well, a lot of people do drop, um, where there's a crash of the endorphins and, um, some people get into a space of um, depression or more emotional or more, um. Maybe not make maybe just not having the most clear mind or drop can look like almost anything. And, so and they can last for days, maybe weeks or months if exactly. yeah, if you're not careful. Yeah. Exactly. So he I, I did immediately go into he's dropping, but also he was in a vulnerable place that was a very touchy subject for him. So I think it was the the combination of the two. Mm. Um and so with that, right, there wasn't any scening. There was a lot of um for me aftercare. Um, which looked like, you know, maybe let's, let, hey, come on, let's go, you know, not, not at that moment, but with the next few days, let's go get ice cream. 
let's go do this. You know, let's go, you know, let's just go hang out and do things together. Let's be together um, and have these moments where we're open and just kind of hanging out and talking and enjoying each other's energy and company and, you know, get you back. And uh, just a quick note, aftercare, guys, um, I know that that word is just kind of slipped in, but that is a huge word and it's very important a lot of you guys who like to see and do things with your fetishes and kinks and things if you are really experiencing these intense highs and you don't engage in aftercare like if you're you're the kind of person who's just like oh i got my dick off and i'm done you're asking for trouble so aftercare is important you need to have the relationship um with that dom so that she can stay connected to you and feel your energy and your needs and be intuitive. But if you're kind of the the person, if you're the kind of person who's just like, Ooh, I got my dick off and I'm done. And you're out the door, you're asking for trouble, especially if you're doing that on an ongoing basis. Mistress. Yeah. Yeah. That's absolutely right. And, um, as as whatever as I can be sometimes. When I say whatever, I mean, you know, I, I, I can get a little cold. Okay. Um and <laughs> and with that, but that that comes with aftercare and that comes with yeah, you know. So but that being said, I do to use that. So ultimately back to the story. So that was all taken care of and um I told him to write me a letter, um, you know, and just pour out his feelings about everything that's been going on and our exchanges and everything. And within this letter, he had come clean about like, you know, feeling feelings of love for me. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and so on. Now keep in mind, I was new. And in my mind at the time, and looking back, it's so cringe. Um, and I'm going, <laughs> love, we're not equals. Right. Oh, and, did and you really? I oh. I told you it's cringe. It's um and yeah, go into how you know that whole like bit of what you think yeah, as Adam. A, yeah, yeah. What, what Dom is supposed to say, right? As yeah. an person. Um, and it and exactly what you said happened. I mean, he reclused, he was not as uh, oh. open to yeah. To being a good boy, um, he was not coming around as often or answering the phone, and I didn't understand really what was going on. Um, and so then, when we we did eventually have a conversation, but this was towards now at this point the end of, if not the end of of our our dynamic, um, which he said he did he felt rejected that I had shut him oh. down after he had, and I didn't even consider this at the time, and this is where I learned. Um, that uh, he opened up and I shut him down, you know, and and that must have been a, a took a taken a lot for him to open up to me like that. Yeah. And so, so you know, and I and I take that one on the chin because that was my fault. Um, I if I'm leading, um, I have I was the one that set set the precedence for that that entire interaction and for how things were going to go, and that was not a very <laughs> well thought out move here. Um, yeah. but, um, so now, you know, I totally understand um, and hold reverence for um, vulnerability and what that means if it's not cared for um, delicately. And with that, I'll land. Thank you for that. Um, for those of you who are listening, <laughs> When we say things like, and with that I'll land or I yield, what's happening is the these are terminologies that we use on the other platform. And so it may sound weird here. It may sound a little bit out of place, but we're just kind of in that space. So you guys will just have to excuse us for that. Um, <laughs> I know that it might be for us. We're just, and I think I even saw, um, I think I even saw um, Canis flicking his mic like we did yesterday so there's just certain things that are carrying over from the old platform to this one but things like you know i'll land i'll yield and you know i'll end there these are things that we do in the um um the on the other platform just so that the person will know that we are done talking i don't always do it it i i, I don't always do it but that's what's happening here Leisha, I would love Mistress Heathen. Thank you so much for that. And actually, before I go to Leisha, 
I want to go back to Michael. Michael, what did you think about what Mr. Heathen just shared? I thought it was um, well, very reflective of what I mentioned, and it sort of shows how I would say um, how I. Th so one of the things I was thinking is that vulnerability in aftercare, it's sort of like that's where the vulnerability the vulnerability happens. It happens during, you know, aftercare during um what she described as the drop. And I find that that is, um, that that's exactly it when you've sort of, you know, expressed those emotions. It's sort of, um, you know, after that, you're sort of waiting to see how they're received and how they receive will sort of determine how you will, you know, operate in the future. So you're sort of, waiting to see if they will be accepted or if they will be rejected. Mm. And when when they're um when they're accepted, it's kind of how can I put it? The rejection or acceptance of the emotional expression, it's everything in the sense that once someone is able to do that, it's um you sort of, at least I do, I place um, such a large degree of trust in them and they become, they mean a lot to me and even, that, you know, have a place in my, in my heart. However, when it's the other way, it's sort of like, how can I put it? It's a big deal in the sense it, um, you know, maybe, and it's not entirely rational, but it's sort of like, once your emotions are rejected, it's sort of like, oh, this is, this is, this is how it goes. So it's like, even if in the future you do accept the, the, the emotional expression, it's still a little bit of, um, you know, walking on eggshells. And that one moment has, um, it's sort of, um, has very strong lasting effects when they're rejected. So I just wanted to add that. So how do you feel right now, Michael? Um, do you feel like you need to walk on eggshells with me? Because I am the one who was at the center of you making you feel rejected or unheard. And, and the way that you processed it was rejection. So how do you feel right now? Are you good with me? We're still going to talk after the show. We're definitely going to talk and I'll spend time with you. But how do you feel with me right now? Are you safe? Do you feel safe? Are you still on eggshells? I don't want to put words in your mouth. How do you feel now? Right now, I feel completely fine. I feel hurt since you've given me the um the chance to um sort of talk these emotions to talk them out. For me, talking about them is um the same as processing them. So being able to sort of, you know, have an emotional release has sort of um, made me feel a lot better. And I have to say that um, your voice, it's, um, it's so soothing to me that we're just hearing you, you know, talk long enough that sort of um, puts me at this, um, well, it makes me feel very um, comfortable emotionally and mm -hmm. mentally and it's um your voice is very soothing and almost provides a a safe space that um you know for my emotions um i appreciate you sharing and like i said we will follow up afterwards i'll follow up with you and we'll talk and spend some time together so michael is new to me um michael i think I think today's only your second day. Isn't that correct? It's only your second day. Yes, that's correct. Right. And so in the beginning, guys, there are, um, there's, I know a lot of times when we talk about relationships, there's like a, a honeymoon phase, but there's also a phase where you're getting to know each other and the edges are rough and you really have to, 
um, for me as a dom, I have to give the sub the benefit of the doubt. And the sub has to give me the benefit of the doubt. So you have to see something in one another so that when those rough edges come up, you're able to um, embrace them, acknowledge them, and keep moving. You know, you, you don't want one little hiccup to be the end of something that could be beautiful. You, you don't want one little moment um, to, to just ruin everything. You really don't want that. And so communication is important. But guys, without vulnerability, communication is just noise. Communication, you know, might just might as well just be that kind of fucking noise where it's just like blah, blah, blah. If you're not connected to what you're saying, and if you're not connected to your partner, communication is bullshit. And keep in mind also that communication, guys, is about communicating with oneself first. Um, one thing that I really love about what Mistress Heathen and some of the other doms will talk about is before coming into the lifestyle, you have to get to know yourself first. You have to know what you want and what you need and why you're there. And and let me just go ahead and say why you're there should not be your dick. Your dick should not be at the center of your universe. It shouldn't be at the center of all of your thoughts, should not be the thing that's motivating you. But communication is about knowing yourself first and having a good communication flow with yourself. And then it's about communicating with the other person. I know that communication is not today's topic, but Mistress Heathen, if you had been in good communication with yourself, would you have said to that sub, um, um, what you like chastised him, you know, we're not on the same level. Like if you, because you said that you were doing what you thought you should do. And the number of times that I did what I thought I quote unquote should do as a dom and I hurt my good boys as well. What I figured out was I wasn't listening to my truth. What do you, what do you say, Mistress Heathen? I uh, 100% agree with that. Um, Exactly. It was, um, I was still very caught up in, in singing, I guess, and, and uh, finding my, again, my dime style. Um, and so that being said, yeah, you know, if my honest initial um, feeling was, was not to do that, um, and that um, it was to possibly actually grow um together right closer um in in emotion um with each other and and feeling i should say with each other um but it was just like no <laughs> we're not right. even i'm here and you're there and um and it was okay and i think a, a piece of me also was not wanting a um romantic relationship at that time and so that was maybe even a way for me to cut myself off emotionally, which again, set the precedence for the rest of the interactions that were going to come. Um, so from then, from that point, yeah, I, I um, just consider every, every aspect um, of, of the interaction and what's being brought to me. And um, again, just the, Think deeply about like how am I going to approach this in the best way to approach this for the best outcome. Um, and I'll let uh, yeah. <laughs> you can land your fucking plane right here, Mister. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have to yeah. Under a lot. No, 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 no. I wasn't <laughs> saying that to make you self conscious. I was just saying that to them, like to those who are listening. That, that's all. I was just letting them know. You you speak however you want. I I would much rather have you focusing on you know, the, the, the lifestyle stuff. Don't worry about your plane landing and all of that. We're good. I love it. Right. Um, Alicia, so vulnerability um, for you, and again, as a female submissive, what does vulnerability look like for you? You were talking earlier about, um, you referred to the conversation where I was asking you if you'd ever gone up and like hugged your dom. Um, but let's hear from you for a moment. Yeah, thanks. Um, well, 
I, hmm, what does it look like? I guess just an openness um, is, is what it looks like, but um, I, I, sorry, I can't remember who said it, but, um, or maybe it was even in the other room that we were in, but somebody said that, you know, it, it, it takes trust to be vulnerable, right? So I feel like, you know, the Dom has to show you <laughs> that they can be trusted, you know, and, and like uh, Michael said, it's kind of like you dip your toe in, you know, to make sure it's safe. And, there, and then like, you know, and you can get more and more as, as time goes on and as trust builds. Um, I think that's true for everyone, not just female, male, you know, I think every, everyone sort of operates like that. But actually I, I wanted to talk about um, what, like when I see vulnerability in someone, how does that make me feel, right? So, and I, I think this is true for everyone. Like, let's say I was, I don't know, at a coffee shop and just started talking to a stranger and all of a sudden he like started crying, like broke down and started crying. Like what, you know, my, my reaction would be like, oh my God, are you okay? Like it's, it's disarming to see vulnerable vulnerability. Um, and, and, uh, so yeah, I just wanted to say that. <laughs> I hope I answered your question. Okay, so it's disarming, but what about within the context of your relationship with your dom? Um, I think. Do you ever see your dom vulnerable? Actually, I listen. This this podcast is a little bit tearing apart my soul. I have to tell you because Why? it's really well. There's there's a lot. There's a lot that it's this conversation is making me think about a lot. Um, well, you don't have to share beyond what you're comfortable yeah. with. I, I'm not putting you on the spot, I promise. Sure, sure. Well, I, I'll say this. I think actually my dom is 10 times more vulnerable than I am, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. She cries a lot more than I do, and that's spankings included. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> the spankings. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute. I'm on the other end of this. Um <laughs> You're so but, cute. isn't that interesting so like I don't know um I I don't know what to say about that. I mean not to say like I should just be crying all the time because you know I think that's not good either but no, uh but you know what Leisha you know I have <laughs> to admit I never thought about this before but honestly I cry more than my subs and my my guys cry I I, I pride myself in having men who cry like, I love that shit. That's beautiful. A man who cries, mm -hmm. not a bitch. He's not a bitch. Unless I call him one and he's wearing panties, then he can be a bitch. <laughs> but right. a man who's just like wimpy and beta and just pathetic, no, I'm not good with that. But honestly, Alicia, <laughs> my guys, I, I train them to be emotional and to be in touch with their hearts and souls. But I have to say that I cry a lot. I, I cried when I I was with a group of doms who um, who wanted to ruin one of my good boys. I was trying to get some help. I, I don't want to go into it, but I, I cry I cry when my good boys are hurting and when I've hurt them. Um, my heart went out to Michael and and my my soul was kind of hurting. I mean, he's only been with me for two days, but. I could feel his pain. I, I wasn't crying and I probably wouldn't have cried over that because I know what he needs, but I can't do it in a public setting. Um, but I am emotional. I, I cried when, um, this is going to sound stupid, but I swear I did. When my Chinese teacher took five points off of my <laughs> homework assignment and I had spent 30 hours on that fucker, I was like, what does she want from me? And I was just angry and livid and stressed out. It wasn't about the test. It was about the fact that I was stressed out and I felt like I had failed. So we we're talking like my personal stuff, right? On a personal mm -hmm. level, I felt like I had failed. I cried and my good boy was like, mistress, you've got this. You know, you can do this. And I will also say, Alicia, that Kenneth Major has not seen me cry but he has seen me be really low and it's only been two days um, with him as well. But he has seen me be like ill, not feeling well, energy depleted. So I, I, I'm, 
I'm processing my own shit here, Alicia. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, so, okay. Like, so your well, dom was- is vulnerable and she cries mm-hmm. more than right. you. That might mm-hmm. actually be normal. It might, but also if I could just tie this into kinks, right? Because, uh, you know, um, you know, a, all of my kinks really have to do with being vulnerable. So maybe that is why they exist. Do you know what I mean? Because I struggle with it. So it's like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, so like, for example, actually speaking of, of, of what had happened, um, I, during when, when you and Michael were talking about what, what happened in, in the other room, um, I, I have trouble t- t- telling my dom, like, you know, you said this and it really hurt my feelings. Like, I, mm. I, it, that's really hard for me to say to her. And I do just bottle it up and I just like, you know, hold on to it. And, 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 and it does, and, and it does exactly like you said, it makes me pull away. It, it mm-hmm. you know, it's, um, but I mean, that's on me. I mean, that's that's my responsibility to, you know, to express it and say, you know, you 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 did this and it really hurt me. Um, Alicia, I, I want to do a little exercise. Hold on just a second for me, okay? okay. Um, j- just a second, and because I want your feedback on this, Michael, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I want you to use your voice and I want you to use your words and tell me um, how I made you feel and tell me that I hurt your feelings. Oh, this is going to be a tough one. Um, So you want me to... Tell you how I made you feel uh, earlier today and Mm -hmm. tell me um, that I hurt your feelings. I want you to explicitly tell me that I hurt your feelings. Okay. So, uh, and, okay. So in the room, when I was being vulnerable. Mr. Salisa, Mr. Salisa. Uh, oh. <laughs> so Mr. Salisa in the room when I was being vulnerable. Mm-hmm. I um <laughs> you hurt my feelings a little bit when it appeared that um my vulnerability wasn't properly handled. Okay. So Michael, I apologize for not hearing you and for not seeing how hard you were working to be vulnerable and i apologize for this shortcoming that i have that sometimes doesn't allow me to see like what a submissive is presenting to me i can see now that you were presenting your heart and your soul and your truth and i'm really sorry that i didn't see that and i'm sorry for embarrassing you i'm sorry for not validating you i'm sorry for hurting your feelings will you forgive me yes i will thank you sweetheart alicia what if you tried something like that with your dom i i can't put words into her mouth i i can't promise that she'll respond like that but what if you tried something like that with her you know, she, she's so amazing. Um, she was, she, she, my dom is, is an amazing, she's very on it emotionally. Uh, she's very emotionally intelligent. And some of those situations she has actually thought about, like without me saying anything, cause that's the way I am. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, the wall goes up. Uh, she has time to reflect on it and then, this this almost sounds like role reversal, but I it somehow isn't. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And she'll come to me and say, and say, you know, like I was really stressed out, and I'm sorry that I, you know, said whatever, because I she knows, you know, I think we all have moments like that where we just like snap at somebody, or you know, we just say the wrong thing, and 
and, and not realizing like the impact that it's going to have, like mm -hmm. p potentially long lasting impact. And um, so, so she's very good at that. Um, yeah, I, I. So what keeps I, you from being vulnerable then? She's <laughs> That's the question. What keeps you from being vulnerable? I know that this is about the male submissive. So, uh, and, you know, and I have to remind myself that we're not in Clubhouse. So, um, but Leisha, let's keep having this conversation. I, I, I'm sure that even though you're not a submissive male, but my guys can identify because they know that I love them. They, you know, if they've chosen wisely, they know that their dom loves them but they still will not be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And I wonder what that's about. I do. Do you have anything else to say about openness and vulnerability? Um, no, I think, I think that's all. <laughs> You're so <laughs> cute. <laughs> oh, gosh. So, Canis, do you have anything else to contribute? I know that your brain is... You're always processing when we talk through things. I've only known you for a few days, but I know that you're always processing. What are your thoughts right now? Well, um, I don't know. When um, I'm thinking about vulnerabilities, I'm thinking about, you know, how a person may feel and awkward. Um, and just like basically caught up in a conundrum as to, you know, what should be done, what should be said at the time. Um, when's the best time to show vulnerability? Whereas I think, and I don't know um, Leisha personally, but just from the couple of days that I've had interaction with her on this platform as well as Clubhouse and um her being submissive in her life and um, her just talking about what type of person she is naturally. Like, like for her being submissive isn't a role she's playing. Like she's naturally humble and a person that loves to be of service despite the kink. So if we eliminate the kink, we're talking about her character. And I think and I think sometimes with the vulnerability, you know, it's sort of like a uh, when you expose the vulnerabilities, um, it just kind of uh, may give the perception of uh, a blemish of your character, you know, um, especially when we're among said peers or the dominant person in our life, you know, we want to appear to be the best subjects that we can. So sometimes being vulnerable may be seen as if it's a letdown to our dom, you know, um, and I'm just speaking for myself. I hear you. Um, you may not have noticed, but I mistakenly cleared out the room. <laughs> Did you guys see that? I don't know what I did with my computer controls, but I, I somehow left the room and came back in. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, okay. And so when I came back in, I'm like, oh, my God, the whole show was blank. So sorry. I need to be careful. I don't know what I did. Echo, hi, you keep coming in at the end. <laughs> Welcome to the show. So I, I missed a part of what you said, Canis, because... I literally left the show, came back. You were still talking, but Michael and Leisha were gone. Uh, I need to be careful. I didn't even know that that was possible. Um, but but thank you. No, no, yeah, no problem. So, what part did you um? What part did you hear up? To? I don't know because I was freaking out. I actually thought that I closed oh. the show. Well, Summarize it again for I'll, me. I'll, Summarize it. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely will. Um, so, I think sometimes with vulnerability. Um, so like when I speak about Leisha, her submissiveness is not like a role. She's naturally humble. She's a person of service, you know, to others. And, uh, you know, this is outside any kink or anything. So she's naturally 
a submissive, you know, I guess in a sense, like she leads her own life, you know, like, but she's humble, you know, so her character speaks that. Um, sometimes with being a uh, subservient, um, you know, the, the, the submissive, sometimes the end awkwardness is that with the vulnerabilities, we don't want to present to you or whoever else is, uh, that, you know, dominating the scene, any sort of blemish because we want to kind of be perfect, perfect for you. Yeah. Get what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I, I want to serve you in the best way that I can. So sometimes as the, the submissive, we, 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 we have to remind ourselves that our service is what brings us pleasure. And sometimes we deny ourselves that. So we don't allow ourselves to truly feel sometimes as well. Mm -hmm. So the, the vulnerability, uh, you know, and especially like, you know, if I'm being a good boy, uh, I, I don't want to ruin that um, perception that you may have of me by telling you, about a flaw, a kink in my armor. You know, why would I want to do that? But there's a time and a place to do that. But, you know, and it's not seen as a flaw, Canis. It, it's seen as you showing me who you are. If you, if you weren't human, I would be bored. And so a part of you being human is your heart. It's your soul. It's your mind. It's your emotions, it's the interactions that you have with me. That is what is interesting to me. It's the, the human interaction and the connectedness. So it's not a flaw and when I see you for who you are. And I'll tell you something else, Kenneth. I've been having this conversation with one of my submissives who, um, who, recently discovered that he could see me he he i don't tell submissives that this will happen and what i mean is i am so focused on seeing you and getting you to be open and vulnerable and seeing how you tick what he realized and he goes mistress i just realized i can see you I can see your openness and your vulnerability, but a lot of times subs are submissive men are so focused on their dicks or they are so focused on their wants and needs and desires that they don't really pay attention to what's happening with the dom. One of the most beautiful gifts that ha that you're presented with is that when you are open and vulnerable with me or with your dom, you can also see your dom and that makes that relationship even more amazing. What do you think, Kenneth? Yes. Yes, I, I, I agree. I agree. Uh, and once again, you know, um, now I may have used the wrong word when I said flaw, but you know, um, there are times when A person may have a certain perception of you and you want them to continue to have that perception of you. So um, it's just, you know, the way it is sometimes. Me personally, um, the way I carry myself on or off the field, rather I'm um, being seen by 10 people or in the privacy of my own home, there are certain things that I just don't do. You understand? So I, I I tend to be one of those dudes that I I I I live my life by integrity. Right? I'm a loner. Um, I don't need tons of friends. I have a lot of um, family members and uh, to 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 satisfy me for years and years and years. And sometimes a family member isn't necessarily related to blood. Could I consider you a family member? 
because that's what separates you from um, most dimes. You don't see um, a vulnerability as something that you can exploit. So you it's don't not see a weakness. It as a yeah, it's not a weakness. Exactly. You know, so where someone who's not trained or as uh, in depth as you are or mistress even, um, they might they might beg to differ. You know, they might look at it as as a weakness or um, as uh, a person being bratty or whatever the case is, always complaining being a nagger, you know, never satisfied, you know. Um, and I can, I think that can get frustrating for a dom, you know, to always have to, 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 to control. I mean, I think the, the art of the domination is to know that the submissive is going to do everything you say and everything that you train him and her to do even when they're not around you in every walk of their life, if it's productive and positive, they're going to hear your voice in the back of their head. And, you know, like some people that are into the church, you know, they'll get into a situation that we like, what would Jesus do? You know, but in this sense, you know, I think the person in charge would have to have the person thinking, what would Mistress Elise that do? That is exactly what, what they do? do. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Mistress, exactly. I didn't do this and, or I did this because I knew what you would say. Yeah. And you know what? <laughs> that that is so that is so spiritual because in ancient Kemet, which is Egypt, they have the declarations of Ma'at. And in the morning you would say, you know. I will not steal, et cetera. And then at night, you would make the proclamation, I did not steal. So in essence, the training that you're providing is very spiritual and esoteric. And I think that's why I connect with you, because I hear and feel how you generally care about what you do, how you do it, I think it's very trend setting. It's different. It may not be um, what people want, but it's the medicine that they need. And that's why you will always stand the test of time. And you will always have people that will provide you with roses at your feet and whatever you need because you command that. And um, I. I love Leisha as well mm, because yeah. she's she's a female version of myself in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, just take out the kink, maybe. <laughs> Do you um, like to have your ass spanked as well? She's a spanko, hardcore. I I I, I enjoy doing it sometimes. Uh -huh. You know, um, I I like it when you know um, I'm. I'm I'm spanked and I'm and I'm I'm edged on, you know. Um, I like a little biting and um, in places that men are a little concerned about biting, you know. <laughs> um, Be careful! So, Don't get yeah. me kicked off of this platform. Yes, <laughs> but um, but yeah, but definitely, just being humble, being a, a loving person, um, yeah. If, if that was something that I was definitely like 100% into, I'd be the best good boy ever mm -hmm. because I naturally am a good boy, you know? But, you so know, we saw it, only... Kenneth. We saw it because I was talking to you today and your significant other came home and you had already been talking about her. You had already been waiting for her. You were looking for her. She wasn't even at the door and you were just like, good boy, waiting for her to come home. And you were on it. You were like, okay, um, she's here. I'll be back later. That's a good boy. Yeah, and I love it. Like I love um I love servitude. I love um catering. Um sometimes um our schedules don't permit it and she's not um 
let's say as dominant as um you know that's not like her lifestyle Listen, that's we're going to have her, to be careful her. i i'm kind of in a mode like i kind of forget that we're not in uh clubhouse i keep forgetting that this is a show because it's the same energy and the same vibe <laughs> so what i want you to do yeah. is um I, uh, because we're at an hour and a half what i would like for you to do is address um, vulnerability and the submissive male. Do that for me, and I'll let um, Michael and Leisha do the same. And I'm uh, going to start wrapping up. So for those of you who may be out there and you have any questions, Blue, you're fucking awesome. Thank you so much. Black Opulence, thank you for being here. And uh, I think everyone else left except for the people who are on the stage. So um um canis vulnerability and the submissive male what are your final thoughts on that please uh, well what i've learned today is that once again it reinforces that i'm not alone so i want to thank michael for expressing himself today um it also shows me how far I've come mm. and how far I've grown and um, how important it is to be comfortable in my skin to know that um, my care is entrusted to someone that potentially feels the same way. Mm -hmm. And that's in every aspect. And um, so that's what I learned today, just the unconditional love that um, both the dom and the submissive needs to have for one another in order for the relationship to um, be as strong as it can be. Can you, you know, see so how those, those feelings and that connectedness cannot be there if the vulnerability doesn't exist, Canis? Can you see that? Yes, I, I do because um then that 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 allows when 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 we don't express the vulnerabilities, then sometimes most times um the the the, the dominant person wouldn't um know for say what's troubling us and they wouldn't be able to fix it. Or um, you know, sometimes the 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 vulnerabilities that we may express may be a direct reflection of how we may be, be treated by the dominant one. So they won't know how to correct what they're doing. You know, they won't be better in tune to our needs. You know, I, I think being, being a dominant person, you're kind of thinking for both parties, like, you know, at a, at a, in a sense. So the, if, if we're not open about our vulnerabilities, like we're living in denial and then, you know, everything else is pretty much fraudulent. You know, uh, the, the emotions aren't really real. Mm -hmm. They're conditional. And we're much more likely to focus and depend on sexual pleasure. And yes. it becomes a distraction instead of something that can enhance the relationship. You absolutely need vulnerability. To my good boys who are listening, you need it. You need it. You need it. And when I'm pushing you to go deeper, you need to understand that mistress knows best and you need to understand that mistress is actually looking out for you. So vulnerability, you need it. Michael, what are your thoughts about vulnerability and the submissive male? All right. Well, what I was thinking is that... um. You know, I've been thinking about a simple phrase that's been sort of going over in my mind, and it's sort of like with being a submissive, that is, um, you know, while the um, submitting sexually is very um, enticing and alluring, I find that the most important um, kind of vulnerability in submission is sort of um, emotional um vulnerability and in, in, in submission and I find that it's that that is more important than submitting sexually because I find that um we're doing it sexually right it's very 
transactional. It's kind of like submit sexually and what you get out of it is the the orgasm. So and what happens is you kind of find that um you know some people tend to want to stop there and I would say um you know in the past that's certainly been you know a transgression I've been guilty of, right? Where it's um you know you submit sexually and then you get the um you know the sexual gratification and that's it but the issue is that yeah you know that that leaves you feeling very vulnerable and vulnerable to the um you know the drop it's sort of like when you're experiencing you know what um mistress he then uh categorized as the drop and you're doing that in a place where you're not um you know, properly um, protected, you know, it can lead you down a very um, a dark path and into a cycle where you sort of, you know, submit sexually, orgasm, you feel the drop in order to, um, you know, not feel the drop anymore. You sort you of keep um, going back to it, don't you, for the sexual high because you're not really fulfilled. Yes. Right. Yes, that is exactly right. Right. And so then you get an addictive pattern. Do you see it? So you you want to feel good, but you're not you're not going about it in a holistic fashion or in a true fashion. So you want to feel good, so you rely on sexual pleasure. But if you have the openness and the vulnerability, you can feel good sexually, but you're also connected to your partner. And they love you and you love them and you have this beautiful energy going back and forth and that fulfills you, that sustains you. But when men come to the lifestyle or even when men are approaching their relationships and it's like, well, I need to feel good and I'm going to process all of that through my dick, I need to feel good. Then he just keeps going to his woman uh, and I'm saying his woman, you know, because he's not seeing my lover. He's not seeing, you know, this partner. He's just like my woman. I'm going to her. She's my woman. She's obligated to give me sex. She's obligated to make me feel good. It it it's it's troubling. Do you understand why I focused so much on vulnerability today and when I wasn't seeing what I wanted to see, I pushed you even further. Yes, it sort of made me. Um, so, for example, um, you know, you, one example of you pushing me further was sort of the exercise that um, you made me do. Um, and the interesting thing about that is it sort of caught me off guard in the sense that um what it made me um I realized that my depth of vulnerability can go further than what I thought it could God. go. Because after doing that exercise I actually um you know teared up a bit and shed a few tears yeah. and it was sort of um very um interesting because b before that exercise, you know, I thought I had um what got it all out. Right. But when you sort of made me confront them directly which i have to admit at first was sort of um you thought i was putting you on the spot yeah you yeah i know that's why i was saying to you i i didn't want to um do that in public um and and so even in the room i knew that i was going to have to follow up with you and i knew that it would probably be a bit emotional i didn't want to put you on the spot but michael can you see how one you, if you're not really open and vulnerable, you can't really receive how much I truly care about you. And, and the relationship cannot possibly grow. It just can't. You would just come and kind of have your brain tickled. Um, maybe you'd get a, you know, hard dick a little bit or whatever, but you wouldn't really be able to connect and be in relationship with me and since you're trusting me to shape and mold you and to kind of help you get ready for life and just some other things that you're working on, 
you wouldn't be able to benefit from that because your walls are up and because you're unable to receive love. If you can't receive love, you can't receive guidance. You can't be shaped and molded. You have to be able to receive love. How do you do that? You have to be open and vulnerable. So I know that it was uncomfortable and I know I was putting you on the spot. I I know that you, you didn't get it, but I'm so proud of you and pleased with you for persevering. And I'm hoping that parts of this exercise, as my own good boys listen to this, I'm hoping that parts of this exercise or the show today will show them how it looks. And even with you processing throughout the show, I'm hoping that they'll see what that that process of processing looks like. You have not only helped yourself today, but I believe that you've helped some of my good boys who listen in and don't who don't have the ability to connect with me directly. Michael, I'll let you have the, the final words here and then we'll go to Alicia. Yeah, I would just like to say that um, you know, even though I've mentioned sort of um, you know, the feelings of discomfort with being vulnerable. I I truly appreciated the um you know being put on the spot and the exercise because I fi- because I find that you know the best lessons are sort of um learned in times of discomfort you know when we sort of try to you know, I I would imagine that if if many people were tried were to imagine you know when they learned their most important lessons I would um I wouldn't be surprised if, um, you know, discomfort tends to correlate with those moments. Yeah, it does. Those, um, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does, and it's so interesting. So for me, I, you know, even though I mentioned the discomfort, I um, I appreciate it because I know I'm getting better. Good for it. you. I'm so proud of you. So proud of you. And, you know, also think about this. We don't need to process this openly, but think about this. If you feel unheard and unvalidated, if you feel attacked, if if sex, porn, and masturbation are the things that make you feel whole and comfortable, where are you going to go when mistress hasn't heard you? Where are you going to turn when I didn't validate you? You know, because you're looking to me for those things. Um. Go youth, I don't know you. I'm I'm a little bit nervous about letting new people up. So if you can type what your question is, then um, I can get a feel for you and know whether or not it would be appropriate to have you up. But please do that within about five minutes because we're actually going to wrap up. The show will be closing in, in about, yes, what is your question? Go youth, you need to type your question for me. Thank you. So Michael, um, um, because I did see you plug something. Uh, yeah. A- a- anyway, just type your question. Um, um, thank you for that, Canis. I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate that feedback. So Michael, just imagine what would happen for the person who turns to sex porn or, or um, masturbation to feel good when their anxiety is high. And when you have that relationship with your dom, what you're looking for is like comfort and peace and a safe space. And if you don't get it, you're going to turn to sex porn or masturbation because that's that's the relationship that you have with yourself. You know, I don't feel good. I'm, I'm anxious. I need to get the stress out. So you turn to sexual pleasure. And, and so the lifestyle becomes tainted. That relationship with the Dom becomes tainted. Um, go youth, you're saying that you're addicted to masturbation. How can you stop? What I would say is visit my website. I do have some services listed there. And I do also have a couple of podcasts. This is one of them. I have one from a few years ago. I'll type it for you. It's called Heart and Soul. And with the Heart and Soul podcast, it's it's 
three years old, there are about 50 episodes. And with that podcast, I mainly focused on sex, porn, and masturbation addictions. So for those of you who are listening, if that is your struggle, then Heart and Soul would be a good podcast for you to look into. As far as I know, it's still up online. It's not active anymore, but it is still there. You can also go to my website, which is Elisa Coaches. That's sweet. Thank you, Candice. And this is Wishing Go Youth. Good, uh, good luck. So my website is elisacoaches.com. There you go. I wonder if it shows up as a link if I do this. Let's see if it shows up as an actual link. Nope, it doesn't show up. Um, so those are two good resources for you. Um, Big Chief says, this is an interesting podcast. You sound like you truly care. These topics don't apply to me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Big Chief. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you out in public like that. I'm sorry. Uh, for those of you who are listening, Big Chief says this does not apply to him. He doesn't need this show, but he does find it interesting. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you out or put you on blast like that. But thank you for the support. So, Michael, um, I, I just, uh, I'm really, really pleased. And I am eternally grateful to Kenneth Major just for checking in with you and you know just just i'm i'm grateful i just love the whole big brother thing just beautiful i'm so proud of you guys and and oh my heart is just full leisha the show is going to automatically cut off in nine minutes so (laughs) vulnerability and submission you can't answer for submissive men but vulnerability and submission what are your thoughts leisha Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think um, part of connecting with people is being seen. And I think in order to be seen, you have to be vulnerable. And so it just comes with the whole human being package. <laughs> so, uh, but I mean, I need to really process everything that happens in this show myself, I have to say, because, uh, yeah, and I need to do that privately. Do you know what I mean? I Listen, need to do that in my there, little introverted there mind. No, so. <laughs> no, there's no pressure. Yeah. And you know what? I mm-hmm. God, I love you so much. I absolutely love you because I tell my subs that it is more than okay to speak your truth. Do you, you guys see what she just did? Submissive men who are listening, look at what she just did. So she saw how I was working with Michael And what she's doing is she's letting me know, mistress, like, I appreciate what you're doing, but I need space. Don't put me on the spot, mistress. That's what she's doing. She's letting me know. (laughs) But look at how she did it. Absolutely beautiful. Submissive men, you guys need to know that you need to, um, uh, that you need to speak your truth. And also, Leisha, this is just another example of how, Male and submissive energies are different because here's the difference with you, Leisha. I automatically know with female feminine energy that you need your own space. Like I I know you, you will sit in front of the television, get your favorite comfort food and sit under a blanket, watch Bambi or whatever, you know, and you'll do your thing because that's what women do. But Leisha with submissive men, they don't know how to find that place inside of themselves. So what I'm able to do is help them like on the spot, but kind of catch them and keep them from falling and provide a safe space in that moment because most men don't know how to do that on their own. The ones who do know are like yoga practitioners. You know what I mean? They're usually religious and things like that. But the average man doesn't really know how to take care of himself like that. So I, I fucking, I just love you. I appreciate you speaking your <laughs> I truth. Love you too. Thank you. You're amazing. Also, I wanted to talk about the, the interaction with you and Michael again, where it was like, you know, because what, what does it feel like, right? Like when, when you're showing yourself it's hard, it, it feels dangerous, right? But the two of you 
went, you went right into it. Like, I want you to say, Mistress Elisa, you hurt my feelings when, and it felt really difficult. But now, mm -hmm. and I can't speak for Michael, like you both went through it and, and nobody died. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and cause that's what it feels like, right? It can feel like, like, like your world is going to end when you open up and, and say something. But then I think with time, it's just, you know, it, that's when it really, things start to clear up and, you know, you realize, yeah, I'm, I'm still okay. She's okay. Yeah, Everyone's yeah. okay. <laughs> I can tell you so, that the first time that yeah. you do it, it is scary as hell. It really is. But the more that you do it, the easier it becomes. And I would say in the beginning, as you're gaining momentum, the hard thing is, you don't know how the other person is going to receive it. And so that's where the anxiety comes from. So in me giving him the words, he knows it's okay because I'm giving him the words. So in the future, he will find his own words. In the future, he knows that that door is open. So the exercise is, let me show you how to let you, let, let me show you how to let me know that I hurt you. Let me show you how to let me know that I dropped the ball, that I hurt your feelings, that I let you down. Let me show you how to do that. And let me show you that it's okay. Guys, listen, um, the show is going to close. I need to, uh, let me see, where is it? There we go. Let me get my music out. <laughs> Set the mood. <laughs> Alicia, thank you for being here. Michael, Canis Major, I, I could say so much, but the show is going to end. I just thank you guys. I appreciate you. I adore you. Um, Mistress Heathen was able to drop by. Blue, you are just always here for me. I don't know who you are. I still don't know why you are a blue demon, but you're good in my book. Thank you for being here. Big Chief, thanks for dropping by. Black Opulence, you're just amazing. Um, I invited you to the stage, but you just sat there and listened, and I appreciate the support. And you're welcome back to the stage anytime. Um, did I miss anyone? Caleb, he's always amazing. So listen, guys, for my good boys out there who are listening, you need vulnerability and submission. You need vulnerability. Without it, you can't connect. You can't love. You can't receive love. You need that openness and that vulnerability. Keep that in mind. Um, for those of you who continue to like the show, thank you, Big Chief. Nice to meet you as well. Uh, okay, sounds like they won an encore. <laughs> I'm here actually every day, Big Chief. This is my 20th episode, but I do come in once a day. Um, and Big Chief, if you and your beautiful, uh, excuse me, dominant wife, um, who obviously has trained you well, if you're interested, you can visit my website. It's www.alisacoaches.com. That's A-L-I-S-A-C-O-A-C-H-E-S.com. Sign up for my newsletter and I, I'm new at this. So I will, <laughs> okay, she's dominant. I know I slipped up there, but I'm new at this. I will have some services coming soon. So go to my website, join the newsletter. Oh, and let's just end there. I'm going to turn this music up. Let's relax. You guys are fucking amazing. Have a great day.